What is up guys, Auto is Lumi here today, and we're going to go over a new Ben and Narada update for the My Hero Academia collectible card game. As sad as I am about this, it was a must need, and as sad as like, you know, my buddies, because he just bought his set, it was a must need. Yes, guys, it has happened. The frog and crow have been neutered. Have they been neutered to the point where the decks will be non-existent? Definitely not. Uh, even with uh, Crow and Frog takedown gone, these decks were still very strong. I still feel like Sue is still a very strong deck. Still a very glass cannon because, you know, they like cannons. Um, but it does put, like, kind of a hindrance on Tokiomi. Uh, Tokiomi just was way too consistent and had, like, very little issues moving throughout the deck. Um, it wasn't punished for being able to do certain things, like, there was no balance or anything like that. Um, the attack brings great stability into the decks it's strong in, helping to end games much quicker and less stress on the attacker's resources. The decks where this card was most problematic tend to be the decks trying to end the game much earlier than we are comfortable with. Glad Jasko has saw that turn kill, turn two kill decks are not a fun thing in any card game. Um, I don't know if you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh. Not fun. Um, Digimon. OTK formats. Not fun. Uh there's got to be some kind of interaction between players, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh is big on FTKs, and, you know, they, they ban those outright real fast. So, I'm glad that Jasko has been looking at this, and been like, okay, yeah, no, this card is not a fair card. I'm sad, though, I never got to play with this card. I'm fairly new to my heroes, so, but I've been playing, I've played UFS way back in the day. And yes, I was... You know, one of those Cassandra Trio freaking players that nobody wanted to play that deck. So, unfortunately. But, uh, yep, winning games, early turns, a uh, viable strategy, but a card can... Yeah, but this card incre increases the consistency achieved. The, achieve that results by an unhealthy margin. Uh, it almost feels like this is like... Um, Back alley haymaker in a sense. Uh, only the difference is, is you can unsuspend any foundation. Like you can ready one card in your stage that has not been ready this combat. It doesn't even have to be a freaking foundation. It just has to be a card. Like you can ready assets. Like this card was very strong. And just that main enhance this card does not count towards progressive difficulty for the rest of the turn is very strong. Uh, Eraser had just got one of those attacks. And, you know, it, it's, it's understandable that it works pretty well for the deck because you're not worried about the, the special, like, enhance. Like, this can't be just splashed into any deck. You actually have to um, play it in, like, a weapon-based, combo-based kind of deck because um, Binding Cloth Whiplash is a combo enhance. So you need a combo. It makes it a little more fair. So, yep, they nerded the crow and the frog. Stronger Darkness is banned. Uh, yeah, this card was cracked. <laughs> Stronger Darkness, uh, the fact that this card did not need to commit made this way too strong. Like, it's, and, and the fact that it's not a once per turn was absolutely busted. If your character is committed, it just gives a plus one damage, and it's not once per turn. Like, that is just too strong for a zero difficulty five check like it helps with consistency too as jasko mentions while this card is only works for a small portion of characters it is simply too strong for the low risk of play compared to similarity of uh, shape based training was the number most played card of the pro hero nationals in dallas stronger in darkness is drastically stronger in characters who can take advantage of it much more comparable to cards such as bench press or making a stand that have a higher difficulty and impact on deck building <laughs> saw a meme it was like if i had a quarter every time kirishima has been eradicated i would have 50 cents it's not a lot but 
the fact it's happened twice kind of blows my mind. Yes, Kirishima 2 has gotten an errata. Instead of the twice per turn destroy one foundation, it has been changed to once per turn destroy one foundation, build one card from your hand face down, and draw, draw your attack gets plus two. It's still good. Kirishima 2 is still a very good like hero to use and stuff, but it makes it more fair because now you're not enabling four foundation four extra foundations and instead you're only enabling two um as jasko mentions kirishima's consistency is higher than we would like him to be we're trimming his effectiveness a bit his enhanced being once per turn will ensure he sees less cards and access to less ready cards over a cycle over the turn cycle so yeah you know and then commit after your arrival's attack is blocked Deals half the damage rounded down, you know, just having that making anything a half block is, you know, pretty decent. Like, I, I feel like that's still fair. I think that's okay. Um, I think the once per turn is definitely the best way to go about it. Because instead of four, now we're just only doing two foundations. And, you know, that's not nearly as bad. So, yeah, guys, that is my little, you know, rant about the new uh, Arata list update. If you guys know any likes CCGs, tell me on my channel. Give this video a like, subscribe, and I shall see you next time. Odd Eyes, Yumiya out.